Okay, let's start. So I'm Jérôme Neham. I'm working for Belibre. Uh, Belibre is a consultancy company in the area of uh, Linux Embedded. So we are about uh, 40 people in the south of France, uh, close to Nice. Nice area, nice people. Uh, <laughs> uh, personally, uh, I'm quite new to open source community. I started when I joined Belibre, Belibre uh, two years ago. Uh, and uh, I'm coming from semiconductor industry, so that's why today's recipe is a uh, base of software with some uh, big chunk of uh, hardware and uh, as well uh, a flavor of uh, semiconductor physics. I hope you like it. <laughs> Hi, uh, welcome everyone. So I'm Pascal Marot, I'm working for NXP. Uh, I'm also based in the south of France, in Sofia Antipolis. So I have the same background as Jérôme here, so I'm coming uh, from the hardware yeah, world and uh, moved to the uh, software world now. So I've been working for NXP for um, three, uh, five years now, and I'm part of the uh, P-Tech team, which is the Power Technology Center team. So we are looking into uh, power management and optimizations on the uh, NXP. IMX uh, application processor family, and uh, I'm especially focusing on the IMX8 family. Okay, so what we will see today, so first, uh, if we have uh, some French people in the room, sorry for the misleading acronym, TP TPMP is not related with uh, famous TV show, French TV show. So this is uh, thermoregulated power management, uh, power measurement framework. So we will see what it is, how it works, why we don't need it, who needs it, when and where it's needed. And we will see what's coming next and uh, what are the difficulties we face. So uh, the most important part maybe in this slide is on the bottom here. We'll do a quick game later in this uh, speak. So if you have a device, you can connect to this address. It will be present on all the next uh, slides. So take your time. So, first question. What is a TPMP? So you have a TPMP right here on this desk. So, <laughs> the big beast. So, TPMP actually is a combination of uh, multiple features. So first, it provides uh, power management. So power measurement capability. It allows to, um, to measure voltage and power on the device on the test on many rails. It's also uh, a thermal uh, regulation system, allowing to heat or cool a device on the test. In our case, it will be a silicon test. It's also a test framework. Uh, it allows to run tests uh, and control all the test parameters that goes with them, so test sequence, uh, test durations, and so on. And it's also a framework that uh, controls everything and allows as well to, um, to repeat the test and collect results and process them offline. So basically, a TPMP is a test setup, a test bench, which allows to perform power measurement at controlled temperature on a, on a device which is running any use case, which can be idle use case, active use cases, um, and collect results and process them. So what TPMP is not? TPMP is not first an option to solve all your thermal issues. However, it may help you investigate them and yeah, fix them. What is not neither? It's not neither a thermal policy. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. So let's have a look at this big beast again. So it's composed of multiple parts, as we discussed before. So first, we have, of course, the device under test, which is the, the section in the green here. 
So on this particular TPMP, we are actually connected uh, one of our NXP evaluation board. This is IMX 8M evaluation board. It's a quad-core device, quad-core ARM A53. Then we have, sorry, we have the power acquisition system. So it's based on Baylib's ACME solution. It allows to uh, probe up to 16 rails at the same time, simultaneously. Here, I'm just showing uh, for lisibility a couple of props, one here, one there at the top. This one, for example, is uh, used, the jack probe is used to measure the power going into the target, so the whole target power consumption. It also, as well, allows to turn it off and on when you do successive tests, so to start from a clean, clean sheet. Then we have the thermal regulation part. So it's basically composed of a Peltier device, which actually we don't see it here. It's uh, sitting between the big fan, which is on top of it, and the device on the test. On the test. Uh, this Peltier has the capability to either heat or cool down. Okay? And for it to work, we need a regulator and this is performed and controlled by that this Mirstetter Tech 1091 regulator. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, small issue, it's stuck. So we have a lag due to network, so backup solution. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, just a couple of seconds. Okay. Here we are. We're back. So then we are the power supply section. So these power supplies are actually controlling the supply of the test bench, not the device on the test. As we saw before, it's uh, supplied through this link. Then, then we have all those which are controlled from a host PC there, communicating to the different elements through USB links. Okay. So this PC handles all the thermal regulation. Uh, so it, it, it connects to the regulator and also to the device in the test because the device in the test also has a, 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 a temperature sensor in it. It uh, controls all the power measurement using the uh, through the belly back me. Uh, and also, of course, handles all the tests and the synchronization between all those elements. So then, how it works. So, how it works. So, I, I don't know if you are familiar with what is the Peltier element. So, this is a Peltier element. This is basically something that is uh, uh, directly converting the electrical energy into thermal energy. So we put a voltage here, and then we got cold on one side and uh, hot on, one side, on, one, on the other side. And if we need more power, we just put <laughs> two together and uh, we get more power. So this is what is a Peltier. We are using a regulator so that we just send commands through the host to uh, that regulator through a Python API. And we have sensors uh, almost everywhere, but the most important one probably is uh, you are, we are using the die sensor uh, so we can have a very accurate control uh, of the temperature. So we are closing the loop with the die sensor with uh, some uh, homemade software. <laughs> So for the power measurement part, we are using uh, the Belibre Acme solution. So it's based on a Beagle Bone Black. And on top of that, uh, we put uh, Acme uh, Cape. So we can see here up to eight 
uh, rooms for uh, probes, and we can put, uh, we can stack two uh, two cape, uh, so we can reach 16 uh, measurements in parallel. So we have different types of probes. We have the jack probe, so we can monitor uh, the wool board uh, power consumption, but it's also used as an on-off box so we can uh, shut down and up the board to control it in uh, automation uh, stuff. And we have the regular probes. Uh, so we have uh, eight of them uh, on, uh, on this demo, but we can go up to 16 on each rail. And uh, we have a uh, graphical interface, or we have a PIAC make capture that we developed for this uh, development that is uh, allowing to get the data, uh, the raw data, and process it later on. So let's look at the test framework. Basically, we are conf configuring everything through a common configuration file. And then we have two software layers, one uh, basic serial, it's an interactive, uh, let's say, uh, uh, like, uh, like a shell. Uh, and you can launch on top of regular shell commands. Uh, you, ca you have additional uh, commands for the TPMP. And on top of that, we are using that basic function with a test launcher, which is the automated uh, part of it. So it's basically sequencing all the operation so everything is obviously open source. So the source are public and available today. And uh, it's as well op open hardware if you want to do it uh, on your side. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> so this is modular. So we can use the terminal-like interface, interface without the, the automation. The automation can be used without the thermal control part. Uh, everything is controlled through the serial port, so we have exactly the same uh, uh, interface for Linux, Android, and we can imagine uh, anything else, by the way. Uh, we are using uh, the Bailey Brackme, so we can uh, control it remotely through Ethernet. And as we are using uh, BeagleBone, we, has, we have also GPIOs available, so that can allow even more uh, automation. So everything is open source, and it's uh, written in Python 3, so it can be easily customized for uh, any usage. So, <coughs> so this is just uh, uh, an illustration of uh, that uh, a common init file. So we have different sections. Here, this is a temperature section. And we can see, for example, in the middle, the temp die target. So here, we are configuring the die target to 25 degrees. I won't go through all the parameters, but uh, you can see the different textures. So here, this, this is test with, uh, here, for example, the list of tests you want to run uh, automatically. Uh, the test board section where you put all the specific uh, stuff related to the device under test. A shell section where you put uh, all the directory with the test. And uh, if you want to get the result of your testing in your mailbox, uh, you can configure this, uh, this mail stuff. So uh, this is uh, an overview of the interactive mode. So what it shows basically is uh, we, have, we are controlling everything from the host side. We have this configuration file that is uh, where you put all the specific stuff. And then from the host, you can control the device under test. You can get the die temperature with, uh, from the CCFS, for example. You can uh, talk with the ACME to make an on-off. And uh, you can discuss with the regulator, obviously, to send new commands to reach new temperatures. what the test look like. So it's a basic uh, shell. So we have some logs that we want to read afterward uh, to uh, confirm what we execute. And the important part is those keywords because it's just a state machine that is looking for the uh, output of the serial. So we just have to use the same keyword uh, around our test. And uh, this is how it works. So here, for example, uh, we, are, we are running a core mark test. 
So if you want to see it running, the plan was to make a demo, but it's not possible here. <laughs> but if you want to see it running and try it, uh, uh, we will be present at the technical showcase tomorrow at the end of uh, afternoon. So come and see us. So this is a bit uh, heavy, but <laughs> uh, basically what you have to understand for this complex slide is uh, the test launcher is just another layer, and it's just reusing the basic functions that are provi pro provided by the basic serial auto. So what it does, it takes the tests that are on the host, push it on the board through that configuration step, then run all the steps with that uh, state machine, and once, sorry, this is uh, finished, uh, then it push all that in the result directory. Why do we need? So, of course, the TPMP is not the only thermal forcing uh, tool available on the market. So, you have, there are many more, and I'm just showing here um, the, the most common ones that you can find. So, you have for the thermal stream, the big beast here, thermal chambers. So, the, the drawback with this one is that you have to put the whole target into the, uh, the chamber, including your power measurement uh, probes. And you have, uh, if some parts are not supposed, uh, expected to support the temperature that you want to achieve, then they may die or melt if it's plastic. And then uh, the one which is the closest to our uh, solution, this is, for example, this Max TC, which also works by the thermal connection. So, Basically, uh, what happens if we compare them with our solution, with our TPMP? So we have TPMP here, then thermal stream, and th uh, thermal chamber here, for example. So we can see that uh, the TPMP is actually very well placed for um, almost everything. So this is for size, weight, uh, accuracy, noise, power, transition rate, and last but not least, for the price. Uh, one drawback is that it does not support a low temperature, but uh, this is due to limitation to the Peltier device uh, itself, which uh, is okay for warm, but uh, not very efficient for when you want to go to a low temperature. Um, uh, but in our case, we don't really care because what we want to know is what is the power consumption uh, in the worst case, and the worst case happens when you are at the higher, highest temperature. So actually, the PMP is perfect in our temperature range that we are trying to achieve. So, small size, cost is low, so you can have it on your desk. You can even build many, and you can integrate them, for example, many into your CI environment. Okay. So same here, we're comparing the PMP with the, uh, these two closest uh, rivals. MaxTC, FlexTC, and again, same conclusion. Uh, it beats them in terms of uh, yeah, size and everything, and price. So, very good option. So, why do we need a TPMP? So, let's do a bit of physics. So, what we call performance is mainly uh, the, the, the clock speed. So it's a propagation delay uh, in the silicon. And uh, silicon mainly depends on three parameters, which are process, voltage, and temperature. This does not appear. Cool. <laughs> so that's uh, simple to understand for the voltage and temperature. So when you increase the voltage, you go to the green side, minimum delay, it, it, it means a maximum performance and it's easy as well for temperature. The green is on the left side, so it means when you increase temperature, the performance is uh, dropping down. For the process, we will deta detail a bit more. So high voltage, high perf, high temp, low perf. So, <laughs> this is what we call the process window. In green, this is what we can sell. Uh, in the, in the middle, we have our target, which are nominal devices. And we have, uh, if, 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 I, if I'm a business guy, I want to increase this area because this is what we sell. What, we, what is here 
directly goes to the trash. So maximum benefit if my window here is large. So consequence, I have to deal with all the distribution, all the spread of samples, uh, not only uh, the nominal ones. Uh, I have SS, FF on each extreme. Do you know what FF mean? So it's FF, F for fast, and FF for fast, fast, <laughs> fast N channel and fast P channel. That's why. So hopefully uh, to explain that more simply, uh, I have an analogy with cars. You might be more familiar. We have a Ferrari in the room. Okay, so good. I, I will explain you why, why you made a good choice. So if you have a Ferrari, you have a big performance margin. You can go to very high speed. But if you're riding on the highway in France, for example, you're limited at 130 kilometers, kilometer per hour. Sorry. Uh, basically, you can ride much faster, but it's not allowed. If you have the smart, then you can reach 130 km per hour. So basically no difference. But when you go to fuel the tank, even if you are not going at high speed with your, with your Ferrari, you'll pay the price for this high performance margin. So that's almost the same for the silicone. If you have fast silicone, even if you're not going at a high frequency, then you'll have to pay the price for this high speed and it will, it will consume more power. So low performance, low power, high performance, high power. So, <laughs> bad order, but. <laughs> so now, sorry for the poor slides, but I, I had to go to the backup solution. <laughs> Uh, so, how the temperature affects silicone? Uh, the carrier number increases with temperature. Oh, first, the mobility decreases with temperature. We have lower, lower performance, we just uh, seen that. But the carrier number, I mean the electrons, are increasing with temperature, which means we have higher conductivity and then higher power. So, high temp, lower perf, higher power, we are really in the best case. So this, that's what we can see here with semiconductor, we have better conductivity when the temperature is going high and then where, even when it's going very to very high temperature, uh, we are running in some thermal runaway case, temperature increase, resistivity decrease, current increase, then power increase, and so on. We should not go to that extremity. So here are some results that we collected with the TPMP. Yeah, sorry again for the slides. It, uh, but, uh, they will be better on the PDF with that we posted on the uh, on the link, on the ELC link. So here uh, we are showing some characterization results that we collected for one board, meaning one silicone, one process, one specific process. We did some uh, several tests, uh, you can different tests, benchmarks. You can see on the X scale here. Uh, so some core mark test on four, three, two, one ARM core, and then some GPU test. And we measure the power consumption at three different temperatures, 25 degrees, 95 degrees Celsius, and 105 degrees Celsius. So we measure the, uh, all the rails going into the IMX 8M device. We, uh, I won't disc uh, I won't, uh, they are the ones shown in color here, so I won't go through all of them, but one which is interesting. Oops. So if we look at, for example, for the VDD sock rail in a light green here, we can see that at 250, at 25 degrees, it's 250 milliwatt. If we go at 95 degrees, it's 700 milliwatt. And 105 degrees, we go up to 850 milliwatt. So, from 25 degrees up to 105 degrees Celsius, actually the uh, consumption on this rail went uh, up by a factor of uh, 3.5. So then some other results, characterization across different boards this time, so meaning different processes. 
uh, you have the different process, uh, silicon processes here. So we ha had actually nine boards. Two silicons were slow, slow devices. Three were TT, also called nominal de devices, the one in the, that we expect in the middle of the uh, distribution, and four fast, fast devices. So we here we show uh, the uh, power consumption for two rails, VDDR, VDD SOC. And what you can see is that actually the, uh, it perfectly follows the uh, theory. The uh, slow, slow devices are the one the least consuming, while the FF devices are the ones which are consuming the most in both cases. Now, if we uh, look at this part here, if you remember the slide before, for we selected one part, and we saw that the power consumption and the VDD SOC was 850 milliwatt, this one. So if you go back to here, actually 800 milliwatts at uh, 105 degrees means that this is this point. And actually what you can see here is that this device that we shown before was not even the worst case. There were actually some other fast fast devices that were actually consuming more of those ones. So this clearly shows the, uh, the big impact on the power consumption of the temperature and the process. So if you want to perform relevant and reliable measurements, you need to, uh, to perform some thermal control. This is mandatory. So now it's uh, time for the quiz. I hope you guys have all connected to the link there. The connection is good. And it's time to recover the network. Yeah. <laughs> ah, yes, we need the network for that. <laughs> so. Okay, it's working. So looks like yes. So let's start this quiz. We'll see if you understood all the all what we explained here. Hopefully, you there will be only good answers. So let's start the session. So what PVT stands for? There is only one possible answer. Is it A, power voltage thermal, B, pressure volume time, C, process voltage, voltage temperature, D, program variance thermal, E, pain vice torture? <laughs> Any idea? So, that's process, voltage, temperature. No need to explain why. Not much people have time to connect. <laughs> so maybe I'll leave you a few seconds. Yeah, so next question. Are you ready? Ready for next question? Okay. So, what is the behavior of a semiconductor at zero degree Kelvin? Is it A, an insulator, B, a supraconductor, C, a good conductor, D, a resistor, and E, everything, A, B, C, and D. So, good question is A. So, at uh, zero degree Kelvin, actually, in a semiconductor, there is no electron in the conduction band. So, actually, it's a perfect insulator. It's not a superconductor. So, what's the behavior of a semiconductor at ambient temperature? Is it a good conductor? Is it a bad conductor? Does it depend? Is it half conductor or is it? Quiet. <laughs> so it depends. 
Why, why does it depend? In, uh, obviously, it depends on process. So next question, what is the behavior at the extreme high temperature? So we have thermal runaway, current increase, mobility decreases, red incandescent, then A, B, C, until D. So of course, the answer is E. You have all of them until you burn the board. So be careful not to, please avoid that, turn off the board before it happens. You should turn off before that. <laughs> so what's the relation between the voltage and power for a semiconductor? Is it proportional? Is it unrelated? Does it depend on current? Is it proportional to voltage square, or are they just good friends? So maybe they are good friends, I don't know about that. But the right answer is proportional to voltage square. This is important to understand that, because often people may think that to reduce power, you should reduce uh, the clock speed. But in fact, to reduce power, you should reduce the voltage. And that's uh, uh, that because of that uh, square factor. And that's why you reduce your vo the voltage. Then you have to adapt the clock speed. That's the correct thinking. So next question, FF parts, are they always the base possible sample you would expect, or you would have liked for a product? A, yes, B, no, C, non-binary, D, A, B, and C, and E, the answer E. So, of course, the answer is no, you don't want to have a FF part. Because uh, if you remember the, the Ferrari that we talked about before, you have a big, big, big engine, big car, but you consume a lot. And you just waste power. No one wants a Ferrari here. <laughs> <laughs> so, what affects on die temperature? And A, environment temperature, B, voltage, C, process. D, system load, or E, A, B, C, D, and then E. <laughs> so the right answer is E. Everything affects on die temperature. That's why you need to control everything, and especially temperature, because uh, uh, for the process and voltage is already controlled by construction. We have finished with, with this uh, quiz. Who is uh, Arnaud? <laughs> so you're the winner. <laughs> <laughs> and I won't throw it away like that. <laughs> so let's go back to the presentation. Hopefully now we have network we can go to the to the good one. <laughs> So who needs TPMP? So who needs TPMP? Who would be interested in having a TPMP? 
So characterization engineers, uh, yeah, it's possibly for our first assessment, but uh, those guys will probably want uh, to know the power consumption across the whole temperature range supported by the device, meaning including uh, sub-zeros. So probably not the, uh, the best candidates. Then industry workings on products where power and temperature are important, like for example, battery makers. Probably these guys, we want also to know the, what happens at a low, low temperature, so not the, uh, the good guys, not the good candidate neither. Product engineers working in aging tests and or worst case conditions, that's a, that's a possibility. Uh, on our side, we did some, we used DPMP uh, to investigate some issues that were happening after days of yeah, tests, so that's a, that's a good candidate. Power management opti optimization teams, of course, yeah. These are the right people, we, we use them on our, in our team every day. And probably the best candidate for our big beast here is the, uh, to integrate them into a power CI. So we're running out of time, so we'll try, try to be quick. Uh, why thermoregulation is a key element in a power CI? Uh, as we said, uh, we are sensitive to PVT. Uh, P and V are fixed by conduction, so we only have uh, to control the temperature to have all the condition controlled. So we need it to replicate uh, each measurement in the exact same condition. Why thermoregulation is a key element in a power CI? So in the real life, we'll go uh, well, um, to blue sky, but in the test world, we prefer, we prefer worst case. So high temperature, we have higher power for the same test. We want to test full team. So we want the worst case uh, for, the, for the test measurement, and this is where it is at high temperature. Why thermoregulation is a key element in a power CI? Because uh, we are getting higher current at high temperature, so we are getting also higher drops, and we can uh, identify some potential electrical issues that can't be detected, detected otherwise. Uh, we can as well assess the thermal policy effects, so some software effects related with the temperature. Uh, we can as well assess some impact of uh, the temperature on other components in, uh, in the device under test, like the GDR self-refresh, for example. And we can discriminate uh, what is related with temperature and what is not, because uh, we, can, uh, we can regulate the temperature as we want. So we can detect hidden issues uh, that are invisible at uh, room temp. And last, uh, it's important because if you, if you have, a, uh, let's say, a farm uh, with different uh, process, with devices, with different process, which will always be the case because uh, you can't control the process, you just get what, uh, what you get. Uh, you can do a calibration phase using uh, that, uh, the temperature as a, as a parameter you can adjust so you can have, all, you can have the same uh, power measurement reading for all the boards you have in your farm, farm by just adjusting this parameter. What's next? So what's next now that uh, we've uh we now have a functional system. We can start thinking about the future and uh, how to improve it. So we've come up with a few uh, ideas. First is to, uh, to go to a new Peltier, uh, instead of using, but uh, this one has two Peltier, different devices stacked together. There are no new ones which are actually uh, stacked from the beginning, built in, and they have much better performance. And with this device, we actually managed to go down to zero degrees. Be and before we were only reaching 10 degrees Celsius. Uh, some other options as well is to improve the, um, the thermal uh, measurement section. So by going for example, uh, to the uh, forthcoming uh, belly back me uh, solution on based on the Raspberry hat. And also uh, we can use the, uh, the, the power of the type C connector so to control the power supplies and also with USB 3 use the extra juice uh, coming from the USB 3 um, for file transfer, the test transfer, transfer of tests into the target and get back results uh, faster. 
some one other option as well. It's a more mechanical option. So uh, with the solution, actually, uh, currently we cannot uh, put the TPMP on top of a socket. So that means we need to have one board per device we test. So before we had nine different processes, so nine boards, very expensive. So now we are designing we are designing a new uh, an adapter that will adapt to our existing socket, and it will allow to only have one board. Uh, where we will do the, uh, the, all the power measurements, and we just need to replace the parts. So it will be uh, very effective in, in terms of cost. Uh, another option as well, new casing. So as I s we discussed before, we can have moisture at low temperature, and this is one of the limitations we have. Uh, we could think of other options, like, for example, having the system upside down, uh, with the uh, device in the test at the, the at the top and the uh, the pretty at the bottom, water will go down and not on the board anymore. So these were uh, hardware possible improvements now in terms of software. So we started this uh, this project as a thermal yeah thermal management uh, for our system, and now it's moved to a complete solution. So. Uh, the, it was just a proof of concept, and we have we had no special requirement in terms of uh, of uh, the framework to use. So now it would be better to actually move to a more standard framework uh, that will allow um, will be better in terms of maintenance. Uh, and the idea would be to actually to to connect our system to the ARM workload automation. And what we would uh, what would be the benefit of the TPMP in this ARM workload, workload automation? It, uh, it will bring the thermal regulation section that is missing into this system. So we, here, this is a standard CI flow. You, can, you don't know it uh, yeah, yeah, perfectly. Workload automation is there. There is already the ACME, which is uh, supported for the power measurements. But what's missing is the thermal regulation. So the idea would be to create a plugin to integrate the TPMP into this, uh, this uh, framework. So here, just uh, quickly comparing the uh, TPMP versus, uh, so it's more CI than uh, work automation. So as I said, the, uh, uh, the important thing would be to fill this gap for the existing solution. Uh, for post-processing as well, uh, TPMP has some post-processing, but not as uh, performant as, uh, as Lisa. So the, uh, the benefit is really here. So we still have a few slides, but you've been patient and uh, you're probably angry. So uh, I propose that we go for a Q&A and uh, otherwise uh, we can close here. If you have more questions to ask, you can come tomorrow and... Uh, and, and ask us uh, during that uh, the workshop. Yeah. The workshop. <laughs> Is there any question? Everything was perfect, uh, crystal clear. <laughs> yes. So we uh, this. Big beasts are handmade, so <laughs> uh, uh, we takes about two days to build one. So we created within NXP. We have ten now, with ten system, ten TPMP in, uh, being used every day uh, throughout the world. So they are used by different teams. Uh, our teams are also used by uh, customer support teams. Are used by uh, some uh, power optimization teams, of course, and also by some benchmark teams. So ten devices are in production. Oh. Yeah, in production uh, now. It's uh, starting from a proof of concept uh, now being used. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a good success for the uh, for next and for the team. Yeah. <laughs> None, <laughs> of course. Um, two. Yeah, a few of them. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we had to do some tests. We, we break some Peltier because at the beginning we used some regular Peltier in some, uh, instead of uh, high temp Peltier. So we've seen that we have to use high temp Peltier, otherwise we melt it together. So <laughs> and, and it's the end. So it's a bit more expensive, but it's still uh, affordable. It's uh, 30, 30 euros for one. Uh, 
instead of five euros, but okay. And uh, and we've broken few boards as well, uh, <laughs> especially bec the, the the first one because of off condensation. Uh, we we let it at uh, 20 degrees, thinking it was good to to stay at uh, low temperature, but this, this creates condensation, and then yeah. uh, uh, when we have uh, water on the board, it, so we are in the south of France, so the so we are yeah, it's hot, so 20 degrees is still too lower than that. After that, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions? Yeah? Yeah. Did not think. Yeah, uh, I, I think the question uh, was: uh, if you are uh, working on embedded device, you would prefer to hit the whole device and not only uh, the CPU. The silicon, yeah. So in our case, for our characterizations, we were interested in this in our sock only. So if we want to to heat up the, the whole platform, you can go to the thermal chamber, but. Uh, this, the, TPMP, the, purpose the purpose of the TPMP is really to focus on one silicon. We don't want to characterize the whole target, just our silicon. Yeah. Yeah, so if the, uh, actually we have uh, between the... We are using what we call a razor, which is a piece of aluminum, <laughs> in other words. So we can imagine uh, changing, uh, working it a bit more to to warm uh, some more uh, components. But uh, currently, uh, it was designed to eat only the CPU. Uh, but I, I think we can combine uh, the different uh, tools here. Uh, this is more to identify which one is guilty, and uh, maybe a thermal chamber can be interesting uh, for for the for the usage here that you you've uh, explained. Any other question? No? Okay, so you're free. <laughs> Thank you. Very much. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, and uh, don't forget, uh, if you want to come tomorrow evening to the, uh, work, uh, to the workshop, to the showroom, showcase, sorry, uh, we will be demonstrating the TPMP uh, live, and we will try not to uh, destroy the device this time. Thank you.